Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dad, aka Lucid. I'm a music producer and a songwriter. And today I'm going to be reacting to El Mal Querer by Rosalia. So let's go. Yeah, okay, so here we are. So Motomami was an unexpected surprise for me. I honestly hadn't even really heard of it before it came out and then it suddenly started getting a lot of hype and I was like, oh, okay, what is this? Um, and so many of you were like, you need to react to it, you need to react to it. And then like I did it, I loved the album and that video was blown up Has kind of been a really unexpected surprise success for the channel, which is so lovely. So thank you to everyone who watched it. But of course on that video, um, so many of you were like, if you like her flamenco-y stuff, then you need to listen to El Mal Querer because Motomami was like a more experimental album for her. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going back and discovering it. I'm sure a lot of people who have got into Motomami are going to be doing the same thing. So uh, yeah, so if you're discovering this album with me, then uh, let's go. We're going to do it together. And of course, as I did with Motomami, I will have the English translation of of all the lyrics up as well so I can figure out like exactly what the songs are about um because that's my thing so I love doing but before we get started if you're new to the channel then make sure to subscribe for more reactions and for all stuff to do with music and my music and also if you want to get to know me a bit better I have an Instagram it's at singsongdan you can follow it the link's in the description or you can just type it in more like my personal life and stuff rather than like about the channel so um, yeah, if you fancy a bit of that, then, uh, yeah, then check out my Insta. Okay, oh, that's really loud. Bloody hell. Okay, so this is song number one. This is Malamente, Cap One Augurio. I'm not sure what the cap... Mmm, I love the claps. They kind of sound really raw, kind of like, they're very much recorded in the room. They're not sampled, are they? I love the movement that it creates. It's really cool. Nice. <laughs> she likes playing with um, words, you know, and like the sounds that they create specifically, you know. You know. What? I'm guessing malamente means something bad, because mal. Like malicious and whatever, you know. It's not quite as like crazy experimental as Malta Mummy, but I really appreciate like it's very listenable, you know. Malamente. I absolutely love the drum production. Every layer of it. It's been great, yeah. That's a really nicely, slickly produced song, actually. Really appreciate the drum production. Really dry, really rhythmic. Kind of dirty. A lot of pop has got very slick. The drums have got very slick on pop music. And that one, although it is slick, it feels like it's in the room, you know, a bit less programmed, which I appreciate. I guess a little bit more pop than Motomami, most of it. It does lack a little bit in, like, experimentation, but that's not always a bad thing. Not every every song, every album has to be a crazy experimentation. I appreciate experimentation when it's there, but sometimes you want to listen to something that's more listenable, you know? And that song definitely is more of that, you know? Let's have a look at the lyrics in English. Malamente. That little broken glass, I felt how it creaked before it fell to the ground. I already knew it was breaking. Oh, badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malamente is like badly. Mamal, mamal, mamal. Yeah. So bad, so bad. It's all bit kind of spooky. I like telling a story of like a ghost on the landing, somebody creeping around the house. Um, but there's a kind of a premonition vibe of it as well, isn't there? Like before it fell to the ground, I already knew it was breaking. Um, so maybe it's like, oh, like some kind of relationship breaking down. Yeah, it was all very spooky, yeah. The gypsy told me that better not go out to see her. It's all about kind of premonitions, bad for the soul, it's bad for the spirit. It's like maybe she's just like fearful of like leaving the house and this is like her trying to will herself to not be afraid of the dark in a way. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is Que No Salga La Luna, Cap 2 Boda. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, we're going to the flamenco here, aren't we? Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, okay. Oof. <laughs> This almost like a precursor to um, oh, what, I can't remember what it's called. The song on Motomame that's similar, the one in the street. I like the work with the filter though. That's quite modernising, you know. Oh, god! <laughs> that made me jump. Shit. The guitar is quite repetitive, isn't it? It's like finding a loop and just iterating on top of it, which is quite interesting. Almost like a procedural songwriting style, isn't it? Again, I love the claps. Oh. Actually, this does have a lot of experimentation to it in the production and stuff. You can sense that she wants to do a project like Motomami, but maybe hasn't had the confidence to quite go that far yet. Love it. Got the clap, the production on the claps, I just love. <laughs> it's really rooting it in real life, this song. <laughs> Valerias is the song I was thinking of. Interesting. Yeah, okay. So that one's like, obviously, the deeply flamenco. I appreciate the kind of like style in which that song must have been written because like, it's this procedural idea. You know, you create a loop, which was the claps and the stomps and the and that guitar that repeated. And then it feels as if she kind of wrote it over the top, just kind of freestyling and keeping what worked, you know. It kind of has this kind of natural in the moment creativity. There's lots of different kind of ways to kind of approach songwriting, but the kind of two main camps are kind of like something that's a bit more in, like intentional just like my, more my stuff and then something that's a bit more like creating something in the moment and like capturing lightning in a bottle that's kind of the sense and that's what I get from this and then they went through different phases in the song where it kind of like took things away and like took it to different places and did some surprising stuff on the way but it very much has this kind of feel like it's like you know a groove it feels like a groove you know I'm such a nerd but like I'm just so obsessed with like a clap or a drum or like a snare or like some percussive elements that just are so well produced that they just kind of have like this real kind of mm, crisp kind of feeling um i know it's such a nerdy thing to love but that's all i appreciate in that song those claps are great <laughs> i'm literally such a nerd anyway let's have a look at the lyrics oh yeah actually before i do el mal the bad desire okay cool now i know que no salga la luna don't let the man the moon rise how lucky I was the day I found her. I was at the point of a blade, perfectly against the wall. It's almost like she's being like pushed up against the wall, is being threatened with a knife. Like the blade of a knife, her eyes shone when I gave her the ring. Gay. <laughs> if there's anyone who objects, may they not raise their voice. Yes, yeah, she's singing from the perspective of someone who's marrying a bride and like, you know, picking out the ring. People shouldn't question our love. Yeah, it's a bit gay. Though I, I'm pretty sure I googled Rosalia's sexuality and it came up a straight but it's certainly a quick coded isn't it in the way that she's taken on this role of somebody who's you know I'm marrying a female yeah it's all kind of sounds like it's at the wedding yeah she's kind of like telling a real kind of full story I love like how in the context of like the style of the song is really cool because it kind of sounds like there's a community vibe to it there's tradition you know and all those things are very much like intrinsic with weddings and marriage so that all kind of fits together which i really like so let's go on to the next song this is pienso en tu mira pienso en tu mira cap three celos Sonriendo pa la calle. I like this organ. Sounds like a maybe a Wurlitzer or something. Ooh. Nice. Really making me lean in. Again, sick drum production. Oh, I love the drum production. Oh, it's so... Mm. Again, some perfect clapping. <laughs> I really like this, actually. I like how legato the melody, melody is over these kind of harsh subby drums and stuff oh nice really just feeling the vibe of this one mm. Mm. yeah it's 
Sounds like she's saying, listen to Mira. The time signature is interesting here, isn't it? Is it in six? Four, five, six. Five. It's a six, but it doesn't sound like a six eight. It more kind of sounds like bars of four and two. Hmm. I loved that. Yeah, pienso tu mira. God, that's like so many uh, syllables in a short space of time. Um, yeah, I really liked that actually. I feel like Motomami was like an album that pushed my boundaries, you know, really kind of was like making me uh, experience music that, you know, wasn't necessarily in my wheelhouse and I learned to really actually really appreciate and love. Whereas this album kind of does feel like it just kind of more solidly sits closer to music that I already am interested in. Do you know what I mean? And that one, I really felt the groove of it. Let's have a look at the lyrics. Candy, candy, candy. And pienso en, en tu mira. Pienso en tu mira. I think of your look. It frightens me when you leave, smiling to the street because everyone can see the dimples that appear. Ooh, maybe not trusting somebody. Maybe being worried that they're going to leave her. And of the sky and the moon for wanting to look at them. It's like describing somebody, maybe a lover, and their beauty and their intensity of their gaze. You know, the, you know all the things that she found really attractive and kind of thinking... You know, is this person, you know, what's to stop them from, you know, somebody else falling for them? You know, it's like there's an anxiety, isn't there? And like the dimples, it's like a very specific thing that she obviously really loves about this person. When you go through the door, I think you'll never come back. And if I don't hold you tight, I'll feel it will be my fault. Wow. Oh, I love that lyric. That is like really well put and really describes an anxiety that I think we've all kind of felt at one point you know fear of abandonment is um a really relatable feeling especially when you've kind of been put through the ringer in like past relationships and it can be difficult to trust somebody and that's kind of like what she's articulating so beautifully in some of those lines like like i fear when you go through the door you won't come back and it will be my fault because i didn't hold on too tight really like articulating a, f a, f a fear and anxiety in such a specific way that I think is like the magic of like songwriting is being able to kind of describe something very specific to you and have it be incredibly relatable to so many people. That's how I feel about the lyric of this song. Yeah, love it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, let's go on to the next song. This is De Aqui No Sales, Cap 4, Disputa. Interesting vocal manipulation there. The phase is weird. It's the motorbike. Motomami, motomami, motomami. This is so cool. Yes, production. Using the samples in this way is so fucking cool. You know what I was saying about experimental? <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Oh, this is so sick. I love the rhythm of this. It kind of has like an otherworldly, like kind of electronic side to it as well, doesn't it? That's very intriguing in this kind of traditional context. Mm. Yeah, mm, yeah, that was fab. I really thought that was just cool like i just loved that segment all with like the building up of the kind of car motorbike samples to kind of create this like super rhythmic interesting semi-musical collage of sound that kind of got a bit more traditional but still had this kind of element of like otherworldly production electronic vibes Amazing! Such a cool merging of the two worlds. I think that was something that I really spoke about a lot in Motomami was this idea that she was, you know, taking something traditional and then like really turning on its head. And that song really did have that feeling because it had the flamenco stylings of the clap and the and the vocal stylings and everything. But the production was just totally, totally different. Yeah. And it's like, it feels here that she's kind of testing the waters a little bit. Like that song is particularly successful, but like, I do think that like so far in the album, it's almost like laying the groundwork for what Mutter Mummy was 
going to then go on and do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at the lyrics. If they're about driving, then that would be fun. Ooh, I've sweet taught you for so long and you're forcing me to make sure that you don't leave from here. It's hurting me more than it's hurting you. Don't mess with me with the back of my hand. I'll make it clear to you. Oh, shit. It's like an argument, isn't it? Like, you're forcing me to make sure. Oh, it's very gaslighty, isn't it? Ooh. Again, it seems like it's from the perspective of somebody else. You're very controlling. Very, yeah, manipulative, isn't it? In, in, the, in the way it's speaking. You're like, you're forcing me to make sure that you, don't, that you don't leave from here. Oh, my God. Disputer. I'm guessing that's like dispute argument, right? Seems to be that maybe she's telling the story of like a developing relationship from different perspectives and the fears that each of them kind of have you know I don't think it's necessarily like truthful you know like a re recounting of events could be like just more of an example of a bad relationship I mean it could be it could be events of her own life that would be uh that would make it quite dark hey you don't, oh wow, okay, so the meaning of the title of the song, You Don't Leave Here, oof, that is so dark, okay, let's go on to the next one, this is song number five, this is Reniego, cap five, Lamento, mm. different vibes, very classical, I wasn't expecting this, ooh, bit of a turning point, I think, ooh, drama. This is giving me more like kind of telenovela dramatics in a way. Ooh. Vocal ad-libs. Mmm, yeah. I don't think I'll ever get over how beautiful her voice sounds. Ooh. Dissonance. It's very cinematic. I love it. So much tension. Making me feel of like a tango. You know. God, her vocal control is just impeccable, isn't it? I'm starving. <laughs> Oof. Oh. Wow. Okay. That was not a song I was really ex expecting. It really f had like a sense of drama to it, didn't it? Almost like the kind of events of this kind of album so far got to a very, like, got to, like, a kind of breaking point for this character. And she's very much like, <coughs> I am broken. You know, <laughs> it's going to be that sense. But in a much more kind of dramatic way than I was expecting, you know. Yeah, very cool. Reniego. I renounce. Okay. So maybe she's, yeah, letting go of the relationship. She's like, no, I'm renouncing this love, I'm getting, I'm letting go. Let's have a look at the lyrics. I laugh on the outside and I cry on the inside for more little pities of this sorrow of mine. Remedy I do not find, I laugh on the outside and I cry on the inside. I resent the hour that I met you, yeah. So she's like renouncing this person that she's been with, which is probably good because it all sounded very abusive in the, pre in the previous song. Yeah, this idea of laughing on the outside and crying on the inside is a very relatable feeling, isn't it? Like... You know, you're kind of like trying to stay strong. You're kind of trying to kind of carry on. Maybe you're a bit delirious, and but on the inside, you're like you you you're hurting. You know, I like the kind of exploration of like what is going on within versus what's like being outwardly projected. I think is very cool. Confidently renouncing the love is you know on the outside is different to the, on the inside where you're like lamenting it. You know, you're 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 sad that it's over. You know complex okay let's do the next one this is presso clausura which is only 40 seconds so i'm guessing it's a kind of an interval type thing let's go oh oh love it i love oh god that isn't that so well played who's that god i find spanish so sexy <laughs> Hmm, interesting. Seems to be posing a question, doesn't it, in the centre of the album. Maybe 
questioning your choices or maybe questioning where do I go from here? Considering the previous song was like renouncing love, maybe that, maybe the question that she's posing herself or he is or whoever it is is posing is, you know, what do I do from here? Let's look at their lyrics. Oh yeah, what does preso actually mean? Prisoner. 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 Prisoner of what? Let's have a look at the lyrics. And then I'll know. Rossi de Palma. Not sure who that is. Well, I, for love, oh, uh, well, I went down to hell. Although, since I went up with two angels, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Then I don't regret having gone down, but going down I did, going down I did. It catches you without realising. You realise when you go out and you think, how did I end up here? Seems like this person is getting, like, talking about how they got carried away with love. They got carried away in this relationship and they became a person that they didn't think they were, you know? Maybe it's, like, from the perspective of, like, the boyfriend, you know, the guy who, you know, was potentially the man in this kind of abusive partnership, maybe, thinking, how did I become this person? I wonder who the two angels are referring to. Okay, let's go to the next song. This is number seven. This is Baghdad, Cap 7, Liturgia. Presumably it's about Baghdad, and that isn't, doesn't mean something else. I found out from him. <laughs> okay, so we've got a Spanish cover of Cry Me River. <laughs> Interpolation, I guess, is probably the more the word, isn't it? <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. I like the marching in the production here. Mmm, nice. I wonder how it relates to Crimea River. Maybe she's like flipping perspectives or something. That would be quite interesting. The style has changed quite a lot now, hasn't it? After these kind of interval songs. Very weird. There's a lot of different kind of like emotional references going on like there's kind of dissonance and like this kind of warm organ but also like a marching and also kind of a frivolous kind of choiry thing it's a mishmash of different ideas which is quite cool a patchwork and then there's like this just a timberlake reference <laughs> why not <laughs> it's a good song to be fair It's so weird. <laughs> Reminded me of another song. Can't remember what it is. Interesting. It's almost like moving into like a major key then at that point, isn't it? A strange song. I liked it. I'm not sure if it all came together, but I liked it. <laughs> like maybe one too many ideas going on, but I appreciate the experimentation there. Yeah, it's interesting how there is experimentation, but it doesn't quite come together as kind of confidently as, as it does in Motomami, maybe. I don't know. Um, development of an artist, really, isn't it? But uh, let's have a look at the lyrics. I wonder why it's called Baghdad. And she's going to burn if she stays there. The flames rise up to heaven to die. There's no one else around there. No one else sitting and clapping. And she's going to burn if she stays there. The oppression, like female oppression in... Baghdad and there's no one supporting her there's no one sitting and clapping and she's gonna burn as she stays there maybe it's talking about like refugees the movement of refugees after everything that went went on and at the exit of Baghdad black, black hair dark eyes beautiful but sad sitting head down and clapping meanwhile around her they passed looked at her and they looked at her without seeing anything alone as hell in hell she's trapped sitting joining her hands to the beat of Balerias it seems she was praying wow really an about turn to what we've been talking about so far with you know, the songs. This one seems to be telling the story of somebody who is kind of maybe trapped in like war-torn Baghdad and is maybe fleeing. Maybe she's seen an image or a video or something and it's, it's inspired her to write this song about this person who is trying to escape like hell because if she stays there, this person is gonna die. She joins the palm of her hands and separates them. It's like she's kind of seen somebody maybe and like, maybe it like, to Rosalia, she's like, I'm not sure whether it's prayer, but to me, I'm relating to it because she says, like, the hands are joining to the beat of the Balerias, which is her reference point, right? The, like, flamenco. Maybe from the lights comes out an angel that fell down is the people who are gonna help them evacuate the city. 
Wow. That is really cool. This is turning out to be a really fascinating story. Seems like they're almost like different chapters of this person's experience, you know? Let's go on to the next song. This is Dimi Nombre. Nombre. Isn't that um name, right? This is something something about my name. Ecstasis. Maybe existential. Maybe it's finding herself post breakup type thing. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. I like the rhythm of it. Rhythm of it. Again. Claps. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Bit of auto tune vibes. This almost has like a kind of club vibe to it, doesn't it? Love it. Love the vocal stuff. Maybe it's kind of like a say my name situation, like fighting for who she is. That kind of refrain almost has like a Middle Eastern feel to it, doesn't it? Especially like after the song called Baghdad, you know. God, I love the claps. <laughs> Such a nerd. Okay, um, do me nombre. I really like the vibe of that one. It really kind of like caught me up. Really like, I just wanted to kind of sit and vibe with it. I guess vibe is the good word, isn't it? Interesting musical reference there as well. Like, kind of sounded almost like a kind of, like a kind of Middle Eastern club vibe, you know, which wasn't expecting. Um, let's have a look at the lyrics for it. Okay, what does di mi nombre mean? Di mi nombre. Oh, it does mean say my name. Oh my God, guys, I'm doing it again. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, you actually speak Spanish, don't you? No, I just got the vibe, okay? Say my name, say my name. When no one is around you, say baby, I love you. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> I love that that aligned with me looking at, like I started singing and then started looking at the lyrics and was like, oh, it's what I'm literally singing. <laughs> So it's a reference, not quite as clear cut as the Justin Timberlake reference, but say my name when no one is around you. May the things you say to me not get out this door and tie me with your hair to the corner of the bed. If the hair breaks, I pretend that I'm tired. I want to be, it's like I want to be captive. I guess it's like, it is about sex. Say my name, put your body against mine. It's like the kind of power that, 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 that you have in name, you know. And she's kind of saying, yeah, I'm not sure, like, what perspective we're in here. But it's like there's an intimacy, isn't there? There's, there's, it's, it's about, like, intimacy and sex and being, like, in the last moment right before, you know, orgasm. Saying my name to my face. It's like there's a lot of power in that, you know. Apparently it's traditional tango melodies, which is interesting. Maybe my reference is a bit off. Or maybe it's, like, similar scales to my Middle East and stuff. I'm not sure. Interesting. Okay, let's go on to song number nine. This is Nana. Which is presumably about our grandmother, who featured in Mortal Mummy, which was nice. Conception. Or maybe it's about like family, you know, family lineage. Or the rain. Mmm. En la puerta del cielo. Ooh. Beautiful. Sounds like really sad. <laughs> this is the genesis of the album, isn't it? I can hear like, the blowing of the microphone as she sings. Wow. So intimately recorded, you know. Ooh. I love the kind of really gentle rain in the background. It's not obvious, but really atmospheric. Interesting harmony. I'm not sure what key it's or mode or whatever it's playing around with, but it's surprising. Yeah. Mm. I really liked that. Yeah. It does feel like there's a lot of ideas in this album that she almost like took and ran with in the next one. Like that one very much had a lot of similar vibes to what well, GE 
what is it, GN13 or whatever it is, which I think she kind of actually really perfected with the GN13 because actually it's like, takes those ideas and really like, nails it <laughs> completely. But there is, there was a real intimacy and a real sadness and a real melancholy in that song that she so beautifully beautifully voices you know um even without knowing what the lyrics mean and yeah like yeah to me it sounds like she's you know saying goodbye to somebody i might be completely wrong oh it means lullaby <laughs> i am completely wrong <laughs> at heaven's door they sell shoes to little angels that are barefoot oh no one has told you that no dream knows hours or times or has an owner i'm not sure what that's about maybe it is about literally about conception Oh, very beautiful. Anyway, yeah, lullaby. Maybe she's singing to a child. Maybe she's singing about a child. Maybe she's singing more generally about children. Beautiful. I like that. Yeah, let's go on to the penultimate song. This is song number 10. This is Le Maldicion. Maldicion, maybe. Captain Cordura. Mm. Sounds like a harpsichord or something, like a synthy harpsichord. It's very gothic. Oh, lush. Oh, I love that. Mm. Nicely produced again. This one's very kind of tumultuous feeling, isn't it? It doesn't sound very rested, foreboding. Is that Smash Bros? That sounds like it's sampled from Super Smash Bros. Melee, I'm just saying. It's very open-ended, isn't it? That sounds like Link. <laughs> mm, beautiful. The vocals in this are so lovely. Much more open-ended, you know. Improvisational. Mm, that was a weird one, wasn't it? I thought it was beautiful, though. The vocals and the melodies in that were stunning. Really, and I loved the harmonies. And I loved all the vocal production on it. Like there were moments where, like, it was very much like in your ear. You, do you know what I mean? Like, but then like it was very much like lulling me into a false sense of security with this all this kind of ballad vibe. And then like cut to this like video video game sample, which to me, I'm hoping I got. The, if I got this sample right, that would be like naming it. But and also show my obsession with video games. Very interesting thing. Like maybe it was almost like a. Like, maybe it represents a distraction. Maybe maybe she's trying to connect with someone and they're just playing video games. Do you know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. I don't know, really. But yeah, let's, let's have a look at the lyrics. Maldition. Maldis, maldition. Damn. It literally just means damn. I don't know, to be damned or, I don't know, cordura. Let's see what cordura means. Sanity. Huh. Realizations, maybe? Uh, let's have a look at the lyrics. Through the street I'm going, they told me there's no exit. I've got to find it, even if it costs my life or even if I have to kill. Oof. Maybe it's about finding yourself and kind of the lengths you'll be willing to go to to like discover yourself, you know, and like stick to your guns, you know. Loving in a moment, I would want to be insane and not love. Oh my god, my stomach, shut up. Literally sounds like my stomach is going, please leave me. It's so loud. Okay, I just need to make it through this the rest of this filming because I'm not gonna have lunch. Loving in a moment, I would want to be insane and not love because loving causes sorrow, sorrow that has no end and the insane live without it. I've left a trail of blood on the floor. I've left a trail that leads me to the first day that I told you I loved you. Loving in a moment, I would want to be insane and not love because loving causes sorrow, sorrow that has no end and the insane live without it. So she's kind of like saying, I would rather be insane than to fall in love again because of the trail of blood and destruction and pain that it caused me. Which is kind of a sad realisation to have really, isn't it? But I think what she's taking from it is an independence. And in this moment is kind of saying, I'm never going to love again, you know? But yeah, the, the, I think the silver line, the positivity there is that, is that she's going to find confidence in being on her own. Sanity, yeah. Because she's pondering insanity. She's saying, I would rather not be sane. I'd rather be insane because then I wouldn't have to love. I wouldn't have to go through all of this, you know. Really cool. Very dramatic. 
<laughs> Before we go into the final song, if you've got this far and you haven't subscribed, then what are you doing? Make sure to click on the subscribe button. There it is. Go for it. For more reactions to all your favourite artists, if you if there's somebody you need me to react to, then make sure to leave a comment. Um, and if you want me to do more Rosalia, like even earlier stuff, make sure to leave a comment as well. Yep, give this video a like if you like it as well, because that really helps it in the algorithm. Um, check out my Patreon if you want to see this video uncut. And you can actually watch my videos ahead of time. So yeah, let's go on to the last song. A ningun hombre. So hombre is man, right? So maybe she's singing about the guy that she's left behind. I don't know. Let's go. Song number 11. A ningun hombre consiento. Solo Dios puede jugar. That kind of vocoder work going on here. It's very image and heap, isn't it? Ooh. Musically, this album is very much more traditional. Ooh. Oh, yeah, wow. Oh, I love that. Oof. Beautiful. I love a good vocodery song, especially in an unexpected way. That's the end. Huh. Oh. It just knows what song to play next, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't even know what the lyrics are. Um, I don't know Spanish. I really love the use of vocoder in a way that's not, you know, Daft Punk electro pop vibes. I love it used in an intimate way. Like in, in Imogen Heap's Hide and Seek, that was kind of like what really was the song that kind of did that for the first time, you know. And she utilises like that effect in her own way in this song that really gives it a sense of power and a deep kind of complex emotional kind of feeling like those big open sing sung moments weren't like super clear in in the emotion that they were trying to get across that, but but there was definitely like dissonance there was clashiness to it there was like a beauty really though real beauty so stunning maybe she's missing the missing the guy even though she doesn't want to be ningun aningun at Ningun. To no man. Okay, so it's to no man, right? So it is more independent. That's good. Um, I like that that is the vibe that she went for at the end of the album. Poder can. Like, I can do this. I can carry on. I can be myself. I can be independent, maybe. I don't consent to any man. That he may dicta dictate my sentence. Only God can judge me. I was yours companion until you became my jailer. On my skin, I'm going to tattoo your initial because it's mine to remember to forever and remember all my life what you did to me one day. Oof, my God. Wow. It's like the scars that were left. That tattoo is like reminiscent. Yeah, like the scars that you left on me from our relationship have changed me forever. But now I've learned to not consent to a man, to not be controlled by a man. I only owe God my obedience, not to any man. And so there's a real darkness to it, but a real sense of independence that she's taking from it at the end of the album. This person, if it's her or if it's a character, I'm not sure, but like throughout everything that she's been through, all the darkness, all the abuse, all the pain, she's come out the other side scarred, but alive and with a confidence in the future that she's going to be independent to herself and not like rely on anybody else and not be obedient and subservient to anybody else anymore. She's going to you live, stand in her on her own two feet and be herself. I love that like the message is super empowering, but it's not like one note. It's not kind of glitzy empowerment, you know, for the sake of it. It's like complex because there's a lot of darkness and a lot of scars. She's admitting that like to get to this place of confidence, she had to go through a lot of shit. And I really like that like the message doesn't feel sugarcoated. It feels real. It feels like a learned message and something that she's then passing on through the music. So, okay, so that's the end of the album. Like I really, really appreciate an album with a with a with a storyline and that definitely had that. It was really compelling. Um, how we kind of went between these different places of darkness and how she kind of managed to learn from it in the end it really does feel like it has that kind of progression to it you know stylistically much more traditional definitely has a lot more of that flamenco actually no stylistically it doesn't musically it does have a lot more of the kind of traditional flamenco kind of uh scales and things like that but stylistically it 
pushes that that musical styling into somewhere that's more pop and for that it kind of like is really foreshadowing what is going to be really I think personally perfected in Motomami. So it was really interesting to see where she came from before she then went on and did Motomami, where I think she really kind of just went for it and just perfected the vision that she was almost like starting to form with this one. But it does stand on its own two feet as an album, like, especially for the storyline of it, which I really, really, really like. Yeah, cool. Thanks for sticking in all the way to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really am loving getting to know these artists who I never, never would have discovered had an open for the channel so thank you so much for recommending her and thank you so much for pushing me to do this other album and uh yeah if you have any more recommendations especially more spanish music i would be completely happy and enthralled and so completely happy to dive into the world of spanish music even more um to make sure to let me know what you want me to react to next yeah uh, before we sign off a special thank you to my weeping wendy patrons their names are appearing on the screen right now these these are the guys who have committed to the second tier of my patreon and are helping me to live my life as a full-time creative um which is the dream for me it's not easy out here for 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 you know a songwriter for a singer for somebody who's trying to make something of themselves in a in a competitive field and you guys are helping so much so thank you so much make sure to tune in next week for the next video i will see you then bye <laughs>